Hey YouTube, so you're going on your walk, your dog's off lead, and there's that moment where you want to get your dog back, and you maybe want to pop them back on lead, the walk needs to come to an end at some point, and yet, how do you do it? How do you catch them? And you're maybe feeling in mild panic, how is this capture gonna happen? I remember it like, I don't know, feeling, ah! They're not going to want to come back. They don't want to kill the joy. Like literally, they're having so much fun. They're having a ball. They're having yeah. a blast. They're playing with their friends. They don't want to come home. They don't want to come home. Well, we're here to tell you there's a game for that. Now, if you have not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? You Ow. need to do it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. There are new videos each and every week. There are videos in the channel library that you can recap on. And what we'd say is we really want to highlight one of those videos right now. And that is that if you have a reactive dog, a dog who barks and lunges at things, and you find that they're barking and lunging, maybe at the end of the lead, and they're, you're struggling to end the walk in that way and get them back, well, We've created a game for that. It's called the A to B, and we actually made a video that is in our YouTube channel right now to check out. Let's head to the learning. Learning! Okay, so there are two ways that we might kind of capture our dogs after a walk, but the reality is that really we just, they, they, we can't get rid of them. They want to be close. And the thing is, if we turn this into a game and if we play a game within this, Actually, we no longer find ourselves ever needing to capture our dogs. Yeah. Our dogs actively seek us out on walks to do this. And I, I have to tell you a very quick story because I had just this struggle with my young border collie, Easy. And actually, this game completely turned it around. And not just a little bit, it meant we went from pretty much stressful walks to really nice off-leash freedom. So this really is one of the greatest gifts you can give anyone with a dog who um, they're struggling to capture. Absolutely. So the first game that we're going to play is middle. Now, the way that middle looks is your dog comes around your leg, stands between your legs, in between, right? So that's an opportunity for you to pop their lead on potentially. It's an opportunity for you to, you know, call them back and send them away again to keep things unpredictable. And the thing is, dogs naturally really like it. So how do we train it? Well, we train it a little bit like this. Break. So I've got food in both hands and all I'm going to do is bring her around my leg, bring her around my leg and meet with food from one of the other hands. So again, break. I know. And what we're looking to see is that they actually just become fluid in being around and, and within our sort of proximity or close proximity to us. And it is that around the leg. Now, this may take a little bit of flexibility from you too, and a little bit of transition and mechanics to get this to kind of work. That's okay. This is something you can play in your living room, your kitchen, your bedroom, your bathroom, your university room. You can play it anywhere. This could be a hallway. Literally, this does not require space. This literally is her dinner. And Daily food space. allowance. Right, daily food allowance and a little bit of playing. Now, what you can start to do is you can start to not have food in the hand that you're bringing them around with and feeding in position. And so that looks a little bit like this. Break. So the cool thing is that you can be doing this out on a walk, you can be doing this out as you're moving, you can be doing this and then allowing them to go free again. This is something that your dog needs to kind of get used to uh, and not being an end position. This is not always capture quite frequently. This is actually come into middle and then I'm going to let you go again. So it's just kind of like a, a fun game, a trick, a, a little solution that you've got in your back pocket when you have that moment that you're worried that you might have to uh, get hold of your dog. Um, the other thing I would say is it's really important you do this in all different places and all different scenarios and you don't always capture them. Yeah. We don't want you to always lots be... Lots of just playing, lots of calling them in, sending them out again. Now, one stage I really want us to add in and I really think it's vital that we add this in and this is going to be a stage that I think that you guys are going to absolutely love and it was the stage that saved Easy, my Border Collie. It's they're going to go into middle and you're going to touch their collar area. Now, it doesn't matter whether they're wearing a collar or they're not. You're yeah. just going to touch that collar area. As soon as you touch that collar area, you're going to feed the dog. Now, if they're wearing a collar, you could grab that collar. If they're not wearing a collar, just touch that collar area so that actually your dog starts to be very comfortable and almost enjoy. And I have dogs who don't always enjoy having themselves sort of like handled here. This is just a, um, we want a condition. It's a good thing. It's, in, it's a nice space. So what we're going to do is we're going to call her into middle. I'm going to touch her neck. 
We're going to feed as I'm holding her. If she had a collar on, then I just hold on to the collar. And what she's learning is that this isn't a bad thing. It's not a bad thing at all. And what we want to see is that, um, and maybe do it with the other hand as well this time, Tom. So that hand there, just so, hello, gorgeous girl. And um, so what you're going to see is that Tom's not really grabbing because I think so many people are quite, um, let's say, uh, a little bit too much. Actually, we're looking at just a touch. So it doesn't have to be like you're grabbing hold of anything or because you can see, even with a, a great little pup like her, she's still like, what's going on? And I think this is a stage that so many dogs learn to become almost collar shy or avoiding of coming back because they actively don't want you to touch them. Now, this is something you can do lots and lots and lots. And most importantly, you allow them to be free again afterwards. So once they've been there, you allow them to, to go again. So it's not like a building pressure pot. You actually allow them the freedom to move. Now, you might be thinking, oh my word, I'd love to play this game, but my dog is absolutely humongous, right? We've got a solution <laughs> We've for you. We've got a solution for that. And there are two options here. You can do what she's doing right here and you can train them to go into a down um, when they do a middle. Or alternatively, we, we can train something that we call side. Now, side looks a little bit like this. Break. What we're gonna do is we're going to bring her around and instead of going through the legs, we're just gonna feed on the other side of us. So we're gonna bring her, I know you want to go between my legs because that's what we've just been doing, but I'm just gonna close my legs. There we go. And we're getting again. Good work, Tom. Um, <laughs> again, we've got a nice side position. And, and I again, think it's really important, guys, that you acknowledge here that this means this game's suitable for all abilities. So it really shouldn't limit you, whether you are, um, for example, we've got a couple of clients who are wheelchair users. This is something they can use to go around the wheelchair and come back to the other side. So actually, it means you're, um, you're empowered, you're enabled to do whatever is the best part of this game for you. So like Tom said, whether it's a middle in down, if you're playing with a very big dog and a smaller person, or whether this is actually you aren't necessarily um, sort of moving and upright so actually you might want to do this in a chair or sat down this is something that you've got another option to do and again we can incorporate the collar scratching the little neck scratches in position um, and then we can just let her go again so that she learns that that's really not a bad deal in fact it's a pretty good deal because she gets her daily food allowance yeah and the cool thing is that your dog was going to get their dinner anyway you're gifting them some time some work some play some engagement with them now what could be better than that they get to have a relationship with you you get to have a relationship with them there's nothing better than being present with your dog and it took all of a couple of minutes so no more catching your dog, no more capturing your dog. Actually, let's inspire great behavior. There's a game for that. All that's left to do is for you to go and take action. Remember, Game Changers, whatever the dog owning struggle, there's a game for that. If you haven't already, remember to subscribe to our channel. And check out our new 25-day online dog training challenge. Watch the videos, play the games, transform your dog owning struggles. As a loyal YouTube subscriber, you can get a 70% discount through the link in the description below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the number one most transformational dog training podcast on iTunes and Spotify, the Sexier Than a Squirrel podcast. And remember to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more live teaching, video content and free training using the links in the description.